Hey there, folks. So, I was just getting ready to uh, do a video on a, another backlight kit, going through my uh, donors, donor consoles, and uh, stumbled across this one, figured, well, I can use this one, but I can also do another video on it. Um, so, here's, here's, here's something for that. Uh, I have done videos on this before, and more or less it is what to do if your console just kind of flickers at you, sometimes it boots, sometimes it doesn't so on and so forth. You can see I'm, I'm flipping this thing on and we get green power light for just a second. Flipping it off, get the same thing. Uh, if I wiggle the switch, I can get it to boot just fine. Uh, this is a problem with the power switch. This is just unfortunately more or less defective by design and it is the culmination of years worth of wear and tear on this Game Boy here. Um, the easy way to fix that is to just bust this thing open and clean that switch, and that's exactly what we'll do. Uh, but I just wanted to go over what the problem specifically looks like so that when we test it after cleaning, I can show you how it has improved. Um, now, I have seen a lot of people, uh, they'll like modify their consoles that were working perfectly fine. You know, drop in a backlight kit, uh, new flash card, stuff like that. And then they're just constantly getting the flickering light or um, a wanting boot, you know, stuff like that. And I just want to say, I, I've said this before in comments, but I don't know if I've ever put this into a video. Um, the more power-hungry hardware you pack into a Game Boy, so like a backlight kit or like an audio amp, stuff like that, the more strain is going on the power switch in the console itself. And these power switches do already wear out. So putting extra strain on an already worn power switch is not gonna do you too many favors. Uh, now, actually, before I even continue tearing this thing down, let me get these two screws out. And I wanna discuss something with you. So, there are quite a few videos going around uh, where people just drip IPA into the power switch, toggle it back and forth a bunch of times, and then call it problem solved, but that doesn't actually fix the problem. It's more like a temporary workaround. You can see mine is still, like I can get mine to boot by fiddling with the power switch. I haven't even taken this thing apart yet. I'm gonna pop both the batteries out. There's no batteries in this console. I'm just gonna jiggle this switch back and forth a few times. Not excessively, of course, but, you know, quite a bit. Switch it off. Pop these batteries back in. And then... Ah, see, it's not doing it. Sometimes that works. This one's probably going to be a little bit more difficult. But, at the very least, notice I can get it to turn on and I have that green power light. I just got to put the power switch in a specific spot specific place, but either way, it's still getting better. I am able to more consistently, until I said that, get it to boot. All right, anyway, let's carry on. Um, the whole point of that tangent is if you're gonna, if you think just dripping IPA in your power switch is cleaning it, do yourself a favor and don't even bother with the IPA because it's, it's not doing anything. It's like the same thing when your cart doesn't read, so you pull it out and you blow on it. Blowing on it's actually doing more damage than just reseeding the cart. A lot of time reseeding it is enough to get it to recognize. Blowing on it destroys the cart reader long term. Puts water damage in your carts. It's also a bad practice, but here we are. Anywho. I'd also like to point out that even though I'm doing this with a GBA, uh, this specific problem and the specific solution does apply to all Game Boy consoles, except for maybe the original DMG. I don't think that one has power switch related issues. Uh, and technically you don't need to remove the motherboard, but it's going to make things quite a bit easier to do so. And we won't risk destroying the shell by doing it, so why the heck not? that out. Boom. 
And so all we want to do is we want to peel this metal shielding on the switch up and try and so we can lift this slider mechanism out and clean out all of the uh, um, oxidation of the contacts. And this metal shielding is kind of difficult to get off. Let me uh, get some tweezers here. So you can see it's soldered on this side and it's soldered on this side, but there's also these little plastic clips holding it over these metal tabs. So what we need to do is we need to get the solder molten and then lift this tab up and over. And then once we get one of the tabs up, it's a heck of a lot easier to get the other tab up, but getting the first tab is always difficult. And um, my preferred utensil is actually gonna be a knife because you can slide that in there It'll deform the shielding just a little bit, but you could slide that in there and then you get plenty of leverage on that clip. Uh, if you do this though, be careful you're not putting too much pressure on the switch itself. You don't want to break it. Also, do be careful of R13 right there. Without that resistor, your Game Boy is going to experience some uh, weirdness. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pop that in there. Don't mind me, I'm left-handed, so I'm doing things a little bit backwards. But we should be all right. usually come at this from the other side. Kind of hard to see what I did, but again, I was just using the knife to put pressure on those clips, and then once I had it desoldered, I was able to lift it up and around. Once we've got that side, I come back in here and uh, with tweezers because this thing does get pretty hot and we'll just hit the other side and then lift it off just like that and then once it's off uh, usually take something and bend it back down we want this top part flat in fact sometimes I even put a little crease in the middle give it this M shape you know like a stylized seagull and then bend the uh, tabs down. You know those little pictures you used to draw of the ocean? We all know you didn't draw actual seagulls, you just drew little swoops, just like that. All right. Now getting the switch off, we can see the problem here. If you look into there, you see these really, really dark contacts covered in a bunch of crud. That is the problem. We need to cr clean that crud off and dripping IPA into the switch is just unfortunately not the way to do it. We need to actually pull this slider out so we can get something in there to clean properly. So we're done with the knife. The knife's going away. My favorite tool is actually half of a cotton swab. Got to cut it in half. You can't just break it in half. Uh, but cut it in half with um, some flush cutters and it's got to be the cardboard tube type it, it can't be the plastic tube uh, but literally cut it in half get a little IPA on there for uh, lubricant I guess and then uh, whoop, bring that in and forgive the horrible noise but Just run that in there. And that is almost always good enough. Look at how much crap is coming off those contacts. Sticking to the back of that tube. Come on. So what I'm gonna do is cut it again, wet it again, rinse, repeat. You can tell it's getting clean when it starts making horrifying noises. Like that, yeah. But that's pretty much all we need to do. Look at how much better that is. Now I'm going to unstick all these screws from the speaker. Uh, one other thing we can do while we're back here, though it usually doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and 
wet the other side of the cotton swab. And this part is optional, but I'm going to do it while I'm in here. We're going to wipe down these uh, contactors just a little bit. And I want to make sure to hold the slider and the contactor in there with my tweezers. This little metal uh, contactor, as they call it, will come out if you're not careful. It's, it's held in there with nothing but friction and or hopes and dreams. Um, so be careful if it does come out. Uh, one thing, when we were opening up the uh, switch, the way I had the knife angled, it did put a little bit of extra pressure on this thing. Uh, and it may have deformed those contacts. So what I'm going to do to fix that, is I'm going to take a second set of tweezers to hold that contactor down in the middle, and then take my main tweezers and just bend up both the legs just a little bit, not too much. It's going to get bent back into shape once we reassemble things. But we just want a little bit of extra, extra range on those things so that when I drop it back in, it is for sure making the best contact it can. I'm going to drop that back in, just like that, and then I'm going to drop the shielding in. I'm going to get one side. One side should latch on. Doesn't always. Usually does. Either way, we can uh, stick it down, hold it there with tweezers. Whoop. I'm not having very much luck with this thing. It's kind of fiddly. I find it a lot easier to, you know, not do on camera, but here we are. I may be able to get this. Oh. Knocking over my light with my tweezers. I ended up poking myself in the finger. side down, flip it over, and do the other side. Easy peasy, we don't need any extra solder. Flux can help, but we don't need it. I'm just going to come back and make sure the first one is nice and tacked down again. And that should be it. A little bit of flux to clean up those joints wouldn't be too bad an idea. But all we want to make sure is we want to look at it from the front and make sure that that shielding is perfectly flush with the switch itself. If the shielding is not flush, like if there's any gap whatsoever for this slider to travel up and down in, it means the switch is not only going to not work, but it's going to work even worse than it did before, if it works at all. I realize what I just said is somewhat contradictory, but I, I think you understand the point I'm trying to make. Depending on how much room it has to move depends on how much worse it'll be. I'm not going to fully reassemble this thing because I'm just about to take it apart for another video anyhow, but I think we can try out at least some of the screws. Put in the one right by the power switch. Put 
and that one. And I'm gonna put in that one. And we'll leave the other four holes empty for the time being. That should be more than enough. Set it off. Put it in. And ta-da! First try, every try. No more flickering. It does still give me a little bit of grief when switching it off. You heard that noise the first time. But look at that. Look at how much more reliable that is. I don't have to sit here fiddling with this thing, get it in the right position. It just works when I switch it on. That's all we needed. Pop that open, give it a little clean. Boom. All fixed. So yeah, that's that's all I got. Pretty simple. Um, let me know if that works for you guys, I guess. Uh, like I said, this does work on every other model Game Boy except for maybe the original DMG. So that includes Pocket, Color, uh, Advance SP, and Micro. I have done it on all four of those other consoles. Not a single problem. I have taken apart a Game Boy Light power switch before, and the process is the exact same, except that you don't have to desolder the shielding. The shielding is just held on with little clips. There's no solder tabs for the light. Uh, and I have done it with that one too. I just didn't desolder it. Uh, but anyway, identical process for every single of the models I just listed. Works pretty darn well, I'll say. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Fun fact, while we're here, this was the um, this was the tape on the lens I had here working bad power switch and now it's just working with out a bad power switch but you notice the back of the tape is all shiny when I peeled that off the lens I took off the center of the anti-reflective coating did you know that these things came with anti-reflective coatings I didn't either until I've uh, started removing it from consoles that started degrading but anyway there you go. Or maybe I'm wrong, and if you know what that is, let me know. This is an OEM lens. OEM everything, actually. Anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. More links in the description. Check out the wiki. I've compiled tons of issues, uh, checklists, stuff like that. Um, known fixes for stuff, etc. And uh, I'll catch you all next time.